Lisa, Absolutely. I, I'm wondering, are, are you surprised at how much of the speech was devoted to pushing back on inflationary concerns? Uh, so yes and no. I mean, we've we've often uh, had a little bit of a skeptical view here uh, about uh, the extent to which you know Chair Powell speaks out of both sides of his mouth. And what I mean by that is, I think that deep down, uh, the chair knows that the U.S. economy actually needs uh, inflation to ultimately give the Fed room. Uh, to raise rates to a level that, uh, you know, gets us to, to policy normalization. Uh, at the same time, you know, he's wanted to, uh, you know, not fan the flames of inflation such that inflation expectations get unanchored. Uh, and so he's, you know, been the at the front of the line and the champion of this speech about uh, everything being transitory uh, when it comes to price dynamics. And uh, what has shocked us uh, is that a good part of the market, um, certainly the bond market, uh, seems to be buying uh, his rhetoric, <laughs> even though they may know that deep down, uh, he doesn't mean it. He wants inflation. Oh, that, that, that is fascinating. Brent, um, what, what were your takeaways from uh, the last half hour? Yeah, yeah, you know, to me, I mean, I think we can keep focusing on inflation uh, because the old Fed taught us to focus on inflation. This is not the old Fed. We need to stop focusing on inflation and start focusing on employment growth because this Fed believes that their old focus on inflation probably cost broader employment growth. And so to me, I'm not surprised. I think it's three yards in a cloud of dust. Uh, they advanced the ball a bit, but they want to see the September jobs report to see what Delta impact is having on the economy. Uh, and so I'm not surprised at all. And I guess bottom line to me is people need to stop focusing on the day-to-day. -day. They need to focus on what this new Fed actually is. This is a Fed that is dedicated to being easy. This is a Fed that is listening to the market. And so I remind you all that back in the day, in 2018, the Fed was expecting to tighten going into 2019. And they actually eased, not because their forecast changed, because the, but because the market told them to. And so the Fed wants to focus on employment. They want the market to move higher. And this Fed is still your friend. Well, and what, what might the market, though, um, come to as a way of potential disagreement, Brent, uh, on the inflation side? The, the point that Lisa's making is, look, the bond market uh, may be able to uh, kind of internalize this idea that they're not going to be proactive in response to these inflation readings. Therefore, rates might be slow to go up eventually. Uh, but ultimately, how negative will real rates stay uh, in the face of some of these uh, inflation data? Well, I think it's a big question. I mean, I don't know what the bond market's ultimately going to do, but there's still a lot of liquidity and people need to put money in bonds for their safer side of their portfolio. Money has to go somewhere. And there's quite a bit of money looking for a home right now. Look, I think longer term and intermediate term, we are in for a rise in inflation. I think it's more permanent this economic cycle. But I do believe with the Fed chair that this is transitory for all the reasons that he outlined. And to me, I don't know that you can have permanent inflation with 9.3 million people to 11.3 million people less employed uh, and not purchasing the labor force than they would be if we had not had COVID. And so I think we have a little bit of room here. Uh, and I think the Fed's going to use that room to keep policy easy. I wonder what you think, Lisa, between, between what he said on durables inflation versus, uh, say, wages. Do you think he's a little less certain about the latter? Uh, absolutely. And again, you know, here, I just wish he would, you know, be much more plain spoken. Um, you know, he talks about this idea and making, you know, a, a very fine line between full employment uh, and maximum employment. Uh, and the reality is, you know, translate that into code. If you want to go from full employment to maximum employment, you're driving wage inflation. That's the point. Uh, and so, um, you know, I think that this is an opportunity to uh, contrast what the Fed uh, is trying to do, and I agree with Brett in, in terms of, you know, they're driving markets, uh, but let's listen to what corporate CEOs are saying. Uh, you know, whether it's the national, uh, the NIFIB data for small businesses talking about price increases, whether it's the quarterly uh, 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 earnings reports that we're getting and, and the, the view we're getting from corporate CEOs, they are talking about price pressures. And they are talking about price pressures pressures coming not just from from the the uh, from the labor side but from restructuring supply chains uh, from input costs 
uh, et cetera. And, and, you know, they know they're on the ground. And I'm not exactly sure uh, why the market's choosing to believe one but not the other. 